My money situation hasn't been the best lately. With rent and bills to pay, it's been a struggle. In my attempt to make ends meet, though, I met someone I wish I hadn't. A few nights ago, I saw an ad on Craigslist, looking for someone to help move a few large items and boxes up from the basement. The job offered 12 bucks an hour cash, and estimated to be around 5 to 7 hours worth of work. That sounded great to me, and best of all, it was within walking distance of my house. I emailed the poster of the ad, and everything seemed great at first. He was thankful that someone had answered so quickly, because he really needed to get things done. After a few emails though, he hits me with something. I want you to know that I'm a gay man. How old are you, by the way? That's a weird message to send. His sexuality should be none of my business. If you call up a plumber to come to your house, you don't share that information with him. I'm a 28-year-old guy, though. I'm in good shape, and I never leave the house without a knife in my boot and a sidearm on my waist. I need the money, and this guy's 68. If he tries anything, I'm confident I can handle myself. Besides that, I like to think the best of people. I try and tell myself that maybe he's just a bit flamboyant, and has had trouble in the past hiring people who turned out to be homophobic. The time comes, and I get to his house. He comes off as a normal and pleasant dude right from the bat. He's polite and friendly, and has a really cool house. It's your typical middle-class New England home from the early 40s. Not something I'd want to live in because you're so closed off with smaller rooms, but they have a nice charm. He's even furnished it with antiques from the time period. So, I'm put a little at ease with everything going so well at first. He takes me down into the basement, and it is a bit creepy. Let's be honest here, most basements are. Even more so when it belongs to a stranger. He shows me what needs to be done, and I start getting to work. Everything goes fine for the first hour or so. Then I notice out of the corner of my eye, he's watching me from around the corner. I try and tell myself it's no big deal. He just wants to make sure I'm not stealing any of his stuff, and that I'm doing what I'm supposed to. After a few minutes, he goes away. About 30 minutes later, he comes strolling in wearing nothing but underwear and socks. Oh, sorry, he says. I was just about to take a shower, and I forgot to tell you a few things. Well, that wasn't really the case, as he just repeats something he told me earlier. He's 68 though, can't expect him to remember everything, right? A little more time goes by, and he calls me from upstairs and tells me to come and take a break and have a glass of water. Sounds good to me. I get upstairs, walk into the living room, and he's sitting on the couch, completely naked. I freeze a bit, and he says, Is this okay with you? I told him that I already informed him I was straight, and if this is what he was looking for, he hired the wrong person. He starts apologizing and puts his little buddy away, and begs me to please finish the job, saying that he didn't mean to make me feel uncomfortable. Again, I need the money, so I agree. I figure there's no way this guy could overpower me, and he has no idea I'm carrying. I get back to work and everything's fine for another couple of hours. I go back upstairs once the job's done to let him know. He tells me no problem, and to have a seat while he goes and gets the money. I sit down, and take out my phone to browse the internet while I wait. After a few minutes, I just know he's right next to me. It's something most people always manage to realize. I don't know the science behind it, if there is any. I didn't consciously see or hear anything, but maybe your brain picks up on little cues subconsciously. Either way, I turn behind me, and there he is, dick out, going to town on it. I admit I freeze a bit from the shock of it. He reaches out and puts his hand on my shoulder. Now this is probably what creeped me out the most. With his hand on my shoulder, 
he leans in a little towards me, smiles and says, Now, don't go and tell anyone what you've just seen, okay? This is just our little secret. Nobody needs to know about it, right? That's not a line that should come to your mind if a 28-year-old is your normal victim. That's the kind of thing you get used to saying after doing shit like this to fucking kids. At that point, I jumped up, told him to give me the money he owes me, and started towards the door. He hands me the money while still jerking off, and says again, Don't forget, it's our secret. A few hours pass, and I receive an email from him. Thank you for what you did for me today. I feel as though we bonded and connected on a very special level. This was a wonderful day I'll never forget. I have more work for you tomorrow. Maybe you'll learn to enjoy watching me share my private moments with you. I didn't respond. In the earliest months of 2014, I started dating my current boyfriend. We hit it off immediately, which resulted in me staying at his house multiple nights out of the week. Eventually, I ended up living there, sharing a mobile home with him and his father. The neighbourhood itself was fairly creepy, one of those unnamed country areas that branch from a main road. Richard, my boyfriend's dad, would tell me stories about how the entire street was owned by one man, a guy who had gotten old in recent years and let the land go. As a result, the field beside our mobile home was overgrown with weeds and old trees. He also told me about these strange occurrences, of which he attributed to two things, aliens and kids from another neighbourhood. Despite his warnings and how creepy the area was, I didn't take him too seriously. After all, his biggest concern was aliens. I was unemployed for a short period of time after moving in, which left me alone in the house while my boyfriend and his dad went to work. I spent most of my days putting in job applications, cleaning up the house and reading online. I guess you could say that my presence at the house was pretty predictable, which is the only explanation to this occurrence. On a day as unremarkable as any other, while I sat reading a book in my bedroom, I heard a car pull into our driveway. The sound was pretty distinctive, considering the area wasn't paved, but rather made up of gravel. Thinking that my boyfriend, Cody, had come home early from work, I slipped some shoes on and started for the front door, which was on the other side of the house. Before I could reach it, a knock sounded against the glass. The front of our trailer had a sunroom, basically a front porch that is encased with windows, making it so you had to go through two doors before stepping into the living room. Being as paranoid as he was, Richard would usually lock the sunroom door before leaving for work, unless he was in a huge hurry. Still, thinking that maybe my boyfriend had come home early from work, I opened the front door to let him in. Only it wasn't Cody at the door but a rather short Hispanic man. He smiled at me through the glass and nodded, almost as if I was exactly who he was expecting to answer. I noticed that he had one hand behind his back, and the other was hanging at his side. I tried not to think too much about it. Beside him, in our carport, was a small white truck, and I could hear that the engine was still running. Um, hey... Can I help you? I tried to make my voice as strong as I could, but it only came out shaky. I'm with the garbage company. I'm here to pick up your trash cans. I blinked, knowing immediately that this was a lie. Yes, it was common for the garbage company to come and pick up trash cans if the bill hadn't been paid, but I had gone with Cody the week before to pay it. Not to mention, the drivers never knocked on the door. They would only ever take the cans and leave. I glanced to my left, seeing that our trash cans were still there, on the outside of the sunroom, somewhat behind the house. They're right there. If you need them, then take them. This time, my voice was more assertive, causing my visitor's smile to turn into a frown. May I come in? he asked. 
I didn't verbally answer. I just shook my head. My heart dropped as I watched him reach up and grab the handle to the glass door, pulling on it to open it. The door clicked, obviously locked. The man tried to pull it again, this time harder, causing the metal to creak. I jumped back into my house and slammed the front door, locking it with purpose. It was so quiet in the house that I only noticed two sounds. My heart pounding, and the doorknob to our back door jiggling. There was no way it could have been the guy from the front porch. He wouldn't have had time to get to the back door, even if he ran. I yelled through the door. I'm calling the fucking police, still baffled at the fact that this was all happening in broad daylight. I could hear the truck drive through the carport and into our backyard immediately after that. I took a moment to look through the blinds of a window, watching as a separate man jumped off of the back porch and into the passenger seat. To this day, I'm convinced that these men knew I was home alone and carefully planned an attack. One of them was meant to distract me while the other broke into the back door. I still don't know what was hidden behind the back of the guy at the front door. All I can say is that I'm forever thankful of how paranoid my father-in-law is. Who knows what could have happened if he hadn't locked the sunroom door.